I mean, this one could be shorter too. No, it's fine. It's your episode. It's as long as you want. Okay. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome back to part two of last week's bonus episode. Title is still uh, TBD for last week's uh, bonus episode. Title with Abigail. So we're gonna be talking about breakups. Tell us about it. You you said you had just recently went through a breakup. I did. Um. So I think one of the things that like we talked about in the last episode was just how my life has been on this trajectory and I really enjoy where it's where I think I'm going but the mo- from moment to moment it's good, right? Mm-hmm. Whether it feels not great in the moment or not or it feels great in the moment like the trajectory itself it feels right. authentic to me. Right. And so one thing that I, we didn't really get to touch on at all until the very end of the last episode was the fact that I actually went through a breakup this in 2022. Um, I won't go into the details of the relationship or too much about why we broke up, but I will say when people hear the word breakup, right, mm-hmm. it is a bad thing. Mm-hmm. It is a bad thing. It's a hard thing. It's a um, negative. Right. Um, but for me... Not to be disparaging to the person that I dated, mm-hmm. not to be uh, regretful of the relationship itself, mm-hmm. but for me, the point of in time of the breakup made so much sense mm. for this trajectory mm-hmm. that it is probably one of the best decisions I made for myself yeah. in 2022. Mm. So therefore, yeah. like even though had, there were a lot of negative feelings, like I was sad, I was right. uh, moments of loneliness, small moments, let's be very serious, I was not that lonely. <laughs> but, <laughs> small moments of loneliness. Yeah. But there were, but in general, like the Net, it was a net positive for me. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. <laughs> and my over accentuating the words net positive for me. For me. But that's really how I feel. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy to answer any questions about it, but I, I feel like if I'm. If I feel this way about a breakup, that there's probably some people out there that are quenching their feelings about that because it wasn't that positive for them and they need to know that it, it's okay that it was. Right. You know what oh, I, mean? I see what you mean. Like some people yeah. can kind of feel guilty that, you know, they feel good about that breakup. Absolutely. Yeah, but it's just like, you know, because like you said, it is that connotation breakup. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, yes. Wow. Yeah. Preach, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I guess what I can say too is that that relationship um, wasn't bad for the time that it took place, right? right? Like, right. I don't have it regrets. served its purpose. It, its, it, it ran its course. Pur- it ran its course. Okay. And the person that I dated was, I feel like, what I needed in that moment in time. Yes. Um, was it the same, mm-hmm. same person? Yeah. Me? Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Very nice very kind, very loving. Um, But at the end of the day, we've talked so much, even in last week's episode and today, we've talked so much about authenticity. And at the end of the day, he was not showing up authentically. Mm -hmm. And I could no longer try and extract it from him when he didn't even know who he was. Oh. I hate you that. Know? Yes. <laughs> like, like you have to show up. So yeah. I guess if it's okay, I want to talk about more about like showing up authentically in relationships. Go and for it. Not, it's just, your not just dating relationships, but also like friendships. I yeah. think that's important. Yes, relationships <laughs> encompasses just human connections. Yeah, you know and what like I mean? and I don't have you ever like had to break up with a friend? Yeah, oh my god, yeah. And mm-hmm. like it's not so for me both and, good and bad feelings <laughs> right yeah. but like I think that in general like this idea of breakups and kind of bringing last week's episode into it as well like it's hard to grow sometimes and sometimes growth requires you to end things with people specifically yeah um, yes and it's close a door close the door so the other door can open yeah Absolutely. Yeah. 
Absolutely. I don't know. What are your thoughts? <laughs> oh no, that's that's so true. You know, it's something that I am definitely a um, definitely experienced and experience. You know, still to this day. Um, what what part are you asking me? Are you asking me the fact that it's hard to grow, or just no? The, um, what breakups have looked like for you in the past, whether that be relationships, mm -hmm. romantic relationships, or friendships. Some have been difficult, you know. Um, I've only been in one relationship, this one guy, you know. Um, overall, um, it was great for me, mm -hmm. both the relationship and the breakup was great for me. Yes. You know what I mean? I'm just going to go we ahead and say city. that. <laughs> <laughs> we just high yeah. five, we're a mess. <laughs> um, but when it comes to friendships, you know what I mean? Those, you know, it's hard because like when you really, really, really care about someone, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And there are some things, you know, when I'm like, you can care about someone and they not care about you, or you can care about someone they can still be toxic for you yeah. or unhealthy, you know, um, and it can be hard to let that go, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Especially if you grew up around toxic, that's what's familiar right, to you. Right. And it can be hard to grow, you know, um, like one of the most uh, hardest things when it comes to human connection is a healthy connection after um, unhealthy connections, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's hard yeah. to transition from unhealthy to healthy. Sure. You know, um, Yes, but um, a lot of them, I can see why, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. it's been a, like, for a lot of them, it was like, it was a long, and I'm, it, especially talking about like high school, it was a long time coming, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I I put up with so much, you know what I mean? I don't know who I was back then, how about that? Like, <laughs> I look back and I was like, right. who is yeah. he? Yeah. You know, um, but then there are also some of those, you know, uh, good friendships, mm -hmm. good friendships that it wasn't unhealthy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, and, and it's like you don't see the meaning in the moment. Mm -hmm. And still looking back a year later, I still don't see the meaning. In Absolutely. It, you know yeah. what I mean? And a lot of them, most of them, I do see the meaning, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, at least right now, I don't see the meaning in it. So it's like sometimes it's hard, but it's like I... I'm still alive without yeah. them. I still made it. I'm mm, still, you that's know, so good. Yeah. like I didn't need them to live. You sure. know what I mean? I wanted them and they were necessary for a season in my life. Yeah. You know, um, like Medea, <laughs> Tyler oh, no. Perry said oh, yikes. <laughs> that, you know, some people are like, you know. Um, oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Was it in uh, uh, Branches? Yeah, the branches. When it was in his play, Medea goes to jail. Play. Yeah, something God, like I that. I just watched it yeah. again for so, like eight thousand. Some people are the leaves. Some, some people the are the branch. leaves, and they just blow away. Very conditional. And then the branches, they're a little bit strong, but you still gotta watch out for them too. Mm -hmm. But um, folks who are the roots, you find like two, three, four, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, good people in your life that are friendships that are like roots. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hold on to those because those ain't going nowhere right they weather the storm they weather the storm and it's not saying that you know people are bad people sure you know um you know it's not saying that the leaves are all bad people <laughs> yeah. it's not saying that you know um it's just saying you know like you know there is a purpose within the seasons you know yeah. when it's winter we don't see a lot of leaves on trees Absolutely. you know when it's fall you know what i mean mm -hmm. um now the leaves aren't they're not innately bad. They they serve that tree that they're, purpose. Absolutely. The tree was beautiful. Yeah. You know what I mean? But what remained is the roots. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? The roots. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. the roots are the hardest things to get rid of mm -hmm. when you cut off the whole trunk and the branches. The roots are the hardest things to get rid of. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and so. Um, one thing that you said a little bit ago was the meaning of ending friendships or like why some friendships had to end. And that really resonates with me because I'm, I'm going through, in the last like two years or so, um, I've been on this faith journey that is different than what it had been for the 10 years prior. Right. And so in the 10 years prior, I was involved with the network of churches, um, which served its purpose. I don't regret it, but right. uh, without going into too many details, like it's over, it's done. But um, I left that network of churches, right. and in that time, and now since I've left, it's almost been two years now, I have lost a lot of friends that stayed with the church. Right. right. And so 
I think that what you were saying really resonates with me because some of those friendships, I don't fully understand why they ended right. and why it feels like they've come to a close. Right. Two years later, I haven't talked to some of these people in two years. Right. Right? Like, what was our friendship even predicated on? Was it the fact that I was attending such right. and such ter- church? Right. Or was it because that me and that person had an unauthentic connection? Right just as humans and based on the human experience and I I find myself unable to let it go sometimes because some of those friendships were so because grieving is a process that's a thing and it can take a long time like the fact that I'm sitting here two years later still being like why did some of those friendships end? Right. Why don't I fully understand? Right. Why can, am I ever gonna have the courage right. to just like straight up ask? Right. You know. Right. Right. Because people make we make impact on each other. People, Absolutely. humans, we make impact. Some can be so deep. Some can be mm-hmm. not that deep. Um, depending on like who the person, who the yeah. recipient is. Yeah. You know, like. Yeah, anyway, so that's just something to mention. Like, yeah, we, human, part of the human experience is impact. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, it's de- that's definitely true. And I think um, it's some, it's sometimes it's just hard for me, I think, to let it go. I think that's the right. part right now where I'm like, Especially I don't, when something's been so good. Absolutely. It's, yeah. Where it has that, like, traditionally it's been good, but it might just be different now. And, both parties are afraid to even address the elephant in the room being that the, right. the fact that like I no longer attend their church right? right and so I don't know I've been toggling that whole conversation with like in inwardly mm-hmm. that internal conversation that like internal, what you would say to them absolutely not, not even just that but just like why can't I move past it why can't okay. I move on right why can't I just accept it the way that it is? Because I think in general, I do that. And yeah. I do that really well. So little no, little fact about me is I am an Enneagram 5. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you know much about the Enneagram, but... For those of us who don't know, tell us a little bit about that. And I am us. <laughs> okay. I don't know. <laughs> Fair enough. Is it like um, a personality test? Yes. Okay. It's a personality test. Um, I don't... I'm not going to lie and say that I know a ton about the Enneagram, but what I do know is that, um, like, if you've heard of Myers-Briggs... Yes, yes. 16 personalities by Myers-Briggs, um, that's more so, like, how people see you. The Enneagram is more how you see yourself. Oh. And it is... I think it's, like, yeah, basically just more so how you see yourself. So there are yeah. podcasts and books and things that, like, go over the different numbers. It's on a... There are nine different types, um, and it's a little bit more fluid than, like, Mm. Myers-Briggs. So, like, Myers-Briggs, they give you uh, whether or not you're uh, um, introverted or extroverted and so on and so forth. Right. The Enneagram is more, like, all-encompassing, I feel like, you know. Right. And so Enneagram 5, for me, it's the one I know the most about just because I am it. (laughs) Let's just be serious. But um, we love an Enneagram Five Queen. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but they're known for um, conserving energy. Right. Okay. So basically, also, so are Aquariuses, which I am also an Aquarius. So. <laughs> what month is Aquarius? Um, beginning of end of January, beginning of February. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that doesn't count for end of February, right? No. Okay, damn it. <laughs> I think those are Pisces. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Pieces. <laughs> uh, so basically, uh, what am I trying to say? Um, one thing that fives are known for and Aquarius is also known for is that we tend to conserve as much energy as possible. So, yeah. meaning, like, if I don't be, if I don't, like, if I'm gonna leave the house, right? I'm gonna first assess the energy that it takes to leave my house right and whether or not it's worth it before i choose to leave my house right Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. that's a very broad uh, it makes a lot of sense (laughs) i like seriously i'm I'm relating to what you're saying yeah Yeah. (laughs) it's a very broad thing that's a very broad example i mean but um in general i think for for me because i try to conserve energy as much as possible 
it's very easy to let things go. Right. Right, because it just doesn't, I, I can I can see it's not going to, it's going to waste too much of my energy, which right. I, I don't have a lot of anyways. Right, I'm also right. introverted. Yeah. Right. So. Say on the, <laughs> so. I'm only extroverted around people that bring me peace. Right. <laughs> right. And so, anyways, so I, yeah, so basically for me to sit and wonder about these relationships yeah. two years later it's conserved it's not conserving a ton of my energy it spent, actually spends tons of my energy and I'm no and I'm exhausted by it you right. know, I'm exhausted by my own thoughts right yeah oh my god yes uh, <laughs> thoughts it, take energy yeah yes, it really does and like it takes energy I people get bored of me talking about it because I am also an external processor in some things, and like something like this, I have to externally process or externally process because otherwise, inwardly, it's all it's already been like chewed over, over and over yeah. and over again. I need to expel it, if that makes sense. Right. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, I think some of my some of my closer friends are like, all right, Abigail, when are you going to stop talking about that? Because you've been talking about this for two years and nothing's changed. And I'm like, I know. I'm also annoyed and frustrated and I mm -hmm. can't let this go. Right. Ooh, right. It's like, how do you think I feel too? <laughs> I was like, trust me, if you're annoyed, I'm really annoyed at it. I know. Yes, I am. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't have a resolve for it. And I right. don't know when that'll end. Right. But... Please, dear God, let it end soon. I just want to let it go. Right, right. <laughs> and that's the thing, like, we, it's always been told to me, oh, I just gotta let it go, let it go. Like, it's that easy. You know, no, it's like, y'all not, not, not yeah. understand what a grieving is. Even if something was bad, or even if something, like, was good, like, you're, something is going away that you are used to. That is what grieving means. Mm -hmm. You know, and it doesn't say, oh, something bad. It can also be something good. It can be something small, like, well, it's not really small, but I, I but like, like moving cities. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like you're, mm -hmm. you're grieving the loss of what you previously have known. Mm -hmm. And you're also having to encompass, you know, the new reality. Absolutely. You know, that you're now in. And yeah. so that's the thing. Like for me, like there are some things, like, that's why like, I can't just easily go to churches because if someone says something about, if a male says something about gay people, mm -hmm. I'm, I, one, I don't like, obviously I'm gonna talk to the person about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Obviously maturely and all that great stuff. Sure. You know what I mean? But even if the conversation goes phenomenal, yeah. you know what I mean? Or even if it doesn't, like, it's like, it's, I know, knowing me, I know it's gonna take time for me to yeah. you know let go of that i don't want to have to put in that energy yeah. into that so it's like i do have to assess and yeah. sometimes people can't like understand that you know that you know because not everyone's like that some people can just like let go stuff and then there's some people that just say they let go stuff and i'm like mm, really be self-aware did you really let it go or did you just brush it under the rug because trust me absolutely. it will come back up trust absolutely. i know that for a fact absolutely like, I... you can let go you can quote unquote let it go now but i was like check those demons did you really let it go because it will come back in like 20 years mm -hmm. i love that phrase brushing it under the rug i feel mm -hmm. like this happens in christian churches all so the much. time <laughs> brushing shit under the rug and i was like if you cannot you can't change unless you're willing to address the truth absolutely people say the truth is the lord i'm not talking about that i'm yeah. talking about you know what i mean the truth oh what's that you're struggling with like you wanted to take your life yesterday, but you can't talk about that, right? Mm -hmm. You can't talk about that because, right. you know, they're just like, oh, you just got to pray about it. You know, these statements that, you know, because brushing it under the rug can sound like a multitude of things. It can be like, Absolutely. well, you just got to be happy or you just got to pray about it or yeah. you just got to, you just got to, or yeah. victim shaming, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. well, if you and it, like that's, we need to validate what's there. Yeah. You know? I have a question about this then. Go for it. Um, so one of the things that we also talked about last week was um, this idea of, oh shoot, let me remember. Oh shit, I thought something was behind me. Oh no, no, you're good, you're good. Uh, I'm just trying to remember. Shoot, you might have died at this point. <laughs> no, it's, it's going to be the time. I forget all the time. Um, okay. I had a thought, now it's gone. That's okay. 
This is why I write stuff down. This is why you have to write stuff down. I need to start doing that because I'd be forgetting things. Okay, what was it that you just said? Oh, brushing things under the rug, right? Do you think... Okay, one of the things we talked about last week was uh, chaos. Yeah. And the idea that people might be afraid to live in peace because of the discomfort of not having something to complain about. Or right, about right. Or... Ooh, I think I know what you're about to ask. Okay, so do you think that it is the human experiment or experience to shove things under the rug so that there's always something to gripe over mm-hmm. and therefore consistently living under this chaotic, mm-hmm. not peaceful kind of a right. thing or do we just do that subconsciously because we don't like to deal with our mess oh you see what I'm okay saying? that that makes sense because it's like still even if it's under the rug it's still there and it's still like a form of chaos it's absolutely. just kind of like you're minimizing it absolutely. but it's still manifesting it's in multiple manifesting. ways of your life absolutely. it's like yeah when you don't deal with stuff you right. just shove it under the rug i think that will mess with your personal peace it does scientifically proving you know <laughs> i'm a social work major okay yes i'm a You know, I'm a graduate social work major. Um, I'm also a McNair Research Scholar. That means, like, I've done extensive research Mm. on how, you know, um, like, for example, like, folks who are incarcerated. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get all into it. But basically what that is is, yes, trust me, the body will, your body is just trying to love you. So much so that it is going to purge out all the things that you push under the rug, all the trauma. Yeah. It's going to purge it out, but it manifests in a multitude of ways. Some people, it Absolutely. can be just avoiding certain conversations. Some people, it could be, you know, just doing hard drugs, you know, to try to yeah. self-medicate. It yeah. can look like, Stress oh, even. I just don't want to, like, I don't even want to be around this group of people. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, your body, you can run away from it, but your body and your mind, it's not going to run away from Absolutely. it. It's going to manifest. Yeah. in some way shape or form yeah. and that is literally statistically proven and for folks listening if you disagree with that i'm not i'm not stopping you from doing your own research you let the research speak yeah absolutely i just thought of that um was like the one of the things that we learn in yeah. uh physics the right. hard sciences right is that energy is constant right, right. like yeah if you if if you push something, that energy has to go somewhere, right? right. Like, mm. whether you see it or not. This is why out in the vacuum of space, if you mm. send something on a path, it's going to continue. Right. Right? Like, it's going to continue until it passes, knocks into something else and passes that energy. Right. Um, you turn um. into heat, whatever. Like, energy is always going right. to Right. It's going to, and it can manifest in multitude of ways. Like, it can multi- be, Exactly. Yeah. So that totally run as a run it resonates with me what you're yeah. saying in the fact that it can uh it doesn't it's not gonna look the same for everyone Ooh, and just because you ignored it does not mean it does not exist right within your person right and if you truly want to live out the peace of mind and get true like rest mm-hmm. and refreshment then you're gonna have to deal with your stuff And you're going to have to deal with the stuff that you swept underneath the rug for years and years and years. Yes, or things that were swept under the rug for you. Oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's the thing. Isn't there research about how trauma affects the body? Stop. Don't get me. (laughs) Don't get me. And that's my, literally, that's my area of that I've researched. That's like, I'm in a field and in a research uh, scholar program. So McNair Research Scholar, folks, it's basically... It's a huge research um, scholar program. It's really hard to get into. I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> that was a little stressful to get into, you know, um, but I'm glad I did it. Mm-hmm. Um, there, I learned and I'm still learning so much of how, and, and we talk about this on episodes of the season, actually, mm-hmm. Abigail. Um, I'll just real quick of, you know, the nervous system and the brain do not forget anything. Literally, from the moment that we um, are able to have some type of brain within the womb, Mm -hmm. our body never forgets. So, you can find yourself, why do I react like this to this? Or why do I think like this to that? You know what I mean? Maybe there's something more to that. Absolutely. This is the thing. In order to, because our body is just trying to survive, 
In order for us to survive what our brain does, it makes us forget, but it does not forget. Mm -hmm. It just I makes see. us, yes, you know, and yeah. so um, that's the thing. Our body, it's trying to help us survive, but it doesn't always know how to do that in the healthiest, best ways. Okay. Yeah. You know, so it's like, that's why treatment and intervention, that's why we have to talk about things. We have to go seek yeah. help if we can. We have to be honest with ourselves in that moment. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Excuse me. Oh, hi. Um, so all of these are going out tonight. Oh my gosh. Um, they are not old. They're delivered this morning, but okay. we're not allowed hi. to keep them. So yeah. are they, where are they from? Um, Texas French bread and sourdough market. Oh, I love that. So you can take as many as you would like. Just would, let me know, and I can back I them up. I would love one, one two, and um, <laughs> three, I guess. Okay. Yeah. I and definitely you. want. The, is that lemon pancake? Yes. <gasps> Yes, I want that and one of the croissants, and I'll take the other muffin. Yeah, what's oh. that one? This one here? Yeah. This one's a Queen Amon. It's a croissant with caramel on the bottom. Okay, I'll do that too. Okay, so Sorry. to oh, review. One, that's a good question. What did I do? One, <laughs> two, three. I think you would have picked it originally yeah. too. Oh, I did. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, okay. One, two, three, and then you wanted a muffin, a croissant, and a lemon. Yes. Okay. Oh, cool. cool. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Journey. That is so sweet. Oh, my gosh. French bread. That oh, is that... so cool. Y'all, we just got, like, free stuff. <laughs> Which we're really excited about. Right. Obviously. Um, but, yes. But, um, yes. So... You know, it's just amazing how this is a thing. This is why it's important to address trauma because Absolutely. trauma in this imperfect world, trauma is inevitable. Mm, yeah. You know, and it's like it's going to purge out. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's why we see, you know, 98% uh, of those who are incarcerated have experienced um, extreme adverse childhood experiences. You know what I mean? Um, there's a huge correlation. It's not saying that everyone who's been incarcerated, like, that's the reason why. Yeah. But there is a, you know what? I'm not even going to go into that. Folks, do you? research on how trauma um, correlates to incarceration rates and how it correlates to correlates to cancer rates oh, yeah. um, heart disease uh, depression suicide suicidal thoughts you know I'm gonna yeah. go over that in season three actually okay so folks stay tuned March 2024 will be <laughs> season three but so far enjoy season two <laughs> Absolutely. I appreciate you take, taking the time to mm. kind of talk about that a little bit. Because oh, so much. I just I, can't even fit it in one episode. I know. It's, but I do appreciate like being able to talk to people who actually do the research in yeah. a live conversation, mainly because I just don't have a ton of the bandwidth to do it for mm -hmm. myself. But I also enjoy getting to learn from other right, people. Right, right. And like, for me personally, I don't know if you feel the same way, but for me personally, when I learn something new, Thank, oh my God, you. thank you. Thank you so much. For me personally, um, I, when I learn something new, it's beneficial for me to go and talk about it to someone else yeah. so that I remember, that I hear myself. Yes, you know, same. Like it's not necessarily about sharing the information all the right. time. Right. Sometimes it is. But right, like, right. Um, but mo the majority of the time, I like to share the right. information. To help yourself, you remember. To help myself remember yes. and learn it and understand it better. Yeah. And so I love opening up the door for yes. people to do the same thing. Plus then yeah. I get more information right, too. Right, <laughs> right. And, and you know, something that I do when it, um, know is, you know, um, um, also something that I'm going to also do in season three is, um, I just know one of the episodes is going to be you are not in control of your own actions all the time. That's mm. true to a certain extent. Um, do research on how trauma affects things. Mm, but, mm -hmm. um, is, um, girl, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot I was going to say. This is what happens when we've been talking for like two hours straight. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Um, uh -huh. Y'all, we're still at this coffee shop. <laughs> we just we just stopped the last episode um, as part one, and we're doing a part two. Same place, same time. Yeah. I got, this I got to use the restroom. Okay, I got, yeah. I got a number two. Oh. That's fine. It's th Vulnerable. this, this, oh, yeah. Th yeah. Um, I knew I okay. Drink it, but, uh, but I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, breakups are hard. Breakups are hard. Whether they're for romantic <laughs> relationships. Yes. Or for just friendships in general. Right. And we also seen how like letting go, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's a process. There's a reason why, folks, there's a reason why it's not easy to let go. Yeah. Like, for example, like someone could go through a breakup and they could just let it go easily. Yeah. And then they can go and tell someone else, well, you just got to let it go just because you were able to let it go so sure. easily. Absolutely. But I'm like, I'm sure in other areas of your life that you're not, it's not easy for you to let go certain things. Absolutely. So it's just like the human condition, you know, like we are 
constantly taking in information in order to survive. We're constantly, this is research speaking folks, y'all know yeah. that. This, we're constantly taking in information to survive, to survive. Now we're in a modern age world that is not healthy for like our human evolution, our current state of humanity. There's a lot of survival mechanisms that um, we don't necessarily need anymore. And um, anyways, let me not get into all that, but anyways, <laughs> It's not going to be easy to let go. Our body is taking in information and it's it's thinking that we're constantly needing this to survive. Mm -hmm. So of course it's gonna be hard to let it go. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, and y'all look at how, you know, um, technology has played a huge part in it, you know, um, as well of like the struggle of letting things go. Absolutely. It is hard, yeah. you know what I mean? And if you've been in a committed relationship with someone and you care about someone, if you have a freaking heart, to someone you know what I mean like of course it's not going to be easy for you to let that go yeah and that was a part of you that was the body taking it in as some sense of survival yeah you know your body was getting some benefit out of that even if it was toxic sure you were getting some type of benefit whether that be company mm -hmm. so it's like mm -hmm. it's going to be hard to let go it's like you're essentially ripping something out that your body took in mm -hmm. you know what I mean and even though that thing it's a good thing to take out and it's a good thing to let go, it is going to be a process. And it should never, that process does not need to be rushed. There's some things, folks, that we're gonna be able to take away and let go easy. There's some things that are come easier over time. There's some things gonna become harder over time to let go. We are always changing. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank yes. you so much for having me. Thank you for being here for part two. <laughs> A two for one. Still here, but part two, part two. I knew it. You will be back for season three. Absolutely. Okay, March 2024, but folks will know about that. Um, <laughs> yes, with that being said, folks, I love you. I life you. Um, if this podcast has touched you, um, or if this episode has touched you, and you, need, you think that someone needs to hear it, even if you just think they need to hear it, you know, it's all about just healing it, we're just healing each other. Go send it to them. Mm -hmm. Share this podcast. This podcast is about healing the world, you know, through other stories. We all need to hear it. The reason why, like, I, you know, one of the reasons why I created this podcast, uh, one is because I needed someone back then. I needed to hear a conversation like this back then. Mm -hmm. But I had no one to talk to. Sure. I didn't know who to talk about. I swept it under the rug, <laughs> you know. So, um, folks, share this. Um, you, you the listener, by sharing this episode, you are also an angel. You are also saving someone's life. It's not just the host. It's not just a special guest. You the listener. You're the reason why this podcast is still going, folks. Yeah. Because of you the <laughs> listeners. So y'all are a bigger part of this than I am. Trust me. Um, also, um, I want y'all to go check out my book on Amazon called It Is Spoken by Trenton Epizon. Epizon is spelled E-P-I-Z-O-N. Um, I've seen that book, you know, save lives as well as my own life. Um, and I know a lot of people like to like advertise and sell shit, you know, because they're getting money out of it. Yeah. Folks, I'm purposely not getting money out of it. I have it set to where I don't get any money out of it. My payment is that someone's life is someone's life has changed. Mm. So go buy that book, y'all. I'm not getting the money on purpose. Like I purposely have it set to where I don't get any money from when someone buys the book. Oh, wow. okay. Yeah, even this podcast, I don't get any money okay. from this podcast on purpose. Yeah. You know, um, not saying it's a bad thing for people who do. It's just that I want y'all to, to not even doubt that this podcast is just. The genuine and the intent is for people. Yeah. It's for people. That's the payment. That's good. That's Not good. the money. <laughs> Alrighty, bye folks. I love y'all. I like y'all. Say bye, Abigail. We will see you back for season three. Absolutely. I'll be yes. back. Bye. I just wanted to add this last quick part to this episode. I want to give a special thanks to one of my best friends, Alex. I know you're listening. I love you, dude. Um, we were talking about roots, a part of a tree, and using that symbolism and that analogy um, during this episode. And I just wanted to thank you for being um, the roots to my tree.
thank you. I love you, dude. Um, he's an amazing best friend, everyone. Um, and I wish him just love, blessings, um, just peace, comfort, 24-7. That's my brother. That's my best friend. And I love you so much, Alex. Thank you so much for being the root to my tree. Hashtag Baddies West. <laughs> he knows what that means. It's an inside joke. Baddies West, Alex. Alrighty. Bye, folks. See y'all next episode. Hey there. If you liked this episode, go ahead and buy my book on Amazon. What the book is called, type it on Amazon. It is is spoken by Trenton Epizon. Epizon is spelled E-P-I-Z-O-N. I really would appreciate the support. Give it a review. Give it a buy. Give it a try. And I promise you, you will not be upset at it. It is a poetry book. It is a very easy, quick read. And it definitely... Um, will give you some healing and some insight and some wisdom um, on abuse, mental health, recovery, um, the tragedy to triumph. You will love it. Give it a buy. Give it a try and recommend the book and this episode with others. Go ahead and give this episode, I mean, this podcast a follow and share it with others. You could be the reason that someone is alive tomorrow because you decided to share this episode today. This podcast is about saving lives, healing ourselves and others, and encouraging others and ourselves as well. Thank y'all so much for the support. Love y'all. I life y'all. I will see y'all next episode. You are valuable. You are beautiful. You are still on this earth because you have the strength. Thank you. Bye, folks.